Hi. <laughs> so I'm Livestrong GM Jess Barron, and we're here with Anna in Cannes, France. So we're going to be featuring your interview as part of Livestrong's Stronger Women Health Heroes series. And I wanted to know what to you being becoming stronger means. Well, I think that's a very broad subject because being strong is not only working out, but it's also being mentally strong and being confident in your own abilities and in your own body and in your own um, behavior. And I think um, we all have that inside and it's different for each of us. So I think um, just embracing that and embracing the differences as well, uh, it's very important to, to, to feel confident and to feel strong. Great. Three years ago, you had your victory against Serena. How does it feel to be on the court and play against Serena? Oh, it was a great honor for me to, to have been able to compete against such a champion. I think she's great. Um, champion and also what she's done for women's tennis it's amazing you know and to be on top for so long in um, nowadays it's it's very very difficult and uh, she's managed to do that so um, that time when I beat her in Australian Open it was a great moment for me I played a very good match and um, it was very competitive. <laughs> Excellent. And a lot of the people here, I know you're excited to be playing tennis against Anna. I'm wondering, after retirement, how has your relationship to playing tennis changed? And for example, how many hours were you playing per week when you were playing competitively or per day? Or how, how many hours do you play now? And then how do you feel about your enjoyment of playing tennis at this point? Well, well at first I was like, okay, I'm not going to play for a while. <laughs> so for the first few months I was just happy to um, kind of do my gym routine and uh, work out for myself because my whole life, my trainings has been scheduled and planned. And it used to be like five, six hours a day. Uh, of course, when you're competing and you're at the tournament, you play less because you compete and you have a match which is completely different kind of workout because we could train for six hours week in week out and then go to play a match one and a half hour and you're so sore so it's completely different um, I guess fitness um, but then um, now I just do a little bit of gym and yoga and uh, so one to two hours a day for me it's like doing nothing um, but uh, I haven't played that much to be honest but I'm looking forward now to pick it up a little more again because I have some exhibitions coming up. Got it and so you mentioned the gym and yoga what's your overall like very much favorite workout to stay fit? To be honest I like running. Um, I half an hour 40 minutes nothing too long no marathons <laughs> but uh, I, I enjoy that because tennis it's very specific sport and it's it requires a lot of agility and fast movements and fast work um, uh, fast foot work so we were not allowed to run for so long because it kind of makes you a little bit tired and slows you down so now I enjoy doing that and it kind of helps me clear my mind and sort of refreshes me and I really started to enjoy yoga Great. It's, it's great. I joined the um, I joined the club and I do it with other women there and it's it's fun. It, I'm so used to working out on my own, so to be in a group, it's fun. <laughs> That's excellent. Now I'm sure a lot of the people here are wondering. Now that you've retired from professional tennis, what are you focusing on? And can you tell us a little bit? I saw a little bit of a preview of your new upcoming video series. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I feel like in my career I learned so much, first of all, about myself and also about well-being because we, 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 we are so exposed to all kinds of pressures and anxieties and workouts and I felt to combine that and share it with people who can relate to it, whether it's a business, whether it's acting, whether it's singing, and sort of putting it together um, to compare um, the workouts and, and, and how it looks like and sort of getting at the same time a little background of the person itself, um, showing the personality because we're all different. Um, I think it would be a really fun way to, to, to combine it, yeah. Excellent. And your husband, Bastian, is one of the first people that you play against in uh, the sports in the video. <laughs> series yeah. look pretty funny <laughs> so who uh, who won and when you were competing against each other yeah I, I sort of asked him to kind of help me out and to see how it would look and um, experiment a little and uh, we played like six seven different sports so you have to watch to see who wins okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be turning 30 this year so are there any big milestones or things that you'd like to accomplish this year and in your 30s? I thought you were not supposed to talk about women. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well taken. <laughs> no, but I, I think, um, I think 
every year you learn something about yourself and I try not to think about the age I mean you you are as you feel and I think I'm still young and um, there's still so many things I want to achieve and do so uh, I just hope to have a nice uh, I don't know party or day with my family and friends nice and who do you look up to and who are your heroes well, I grew up watching Monica Seles, so she was my big hero growing up. Um, and then once I actually came on tour, I really admire Roger Federer, not only for his demeanor on court and the way he plays and everything that he achieved, but also just being a good person, because I think that is so important. Um, because success and uh, trophies and everything comes and goes but who you are as a person stays with you forever and um, that's why I really admire him and I think that is so important because you can see in different um, different businesses different areas people change with the success or fame or whatever it is so to stay the person you are um, I think it's it's very very hard and a great achievement <laughs> We talked a bit about killer instinct and when you're on the court, that feeling of like, you're probably friends with some of the players off the court, but how does it feel to you to be competing against them if it's someone that you have a friendship with in real life? Well, unfortunately in tennis there are not too many close friendships and uh, I think that is probably one of the reasons. But through the years I developed some of the close relationship to some, some of the other girls and I used to play with some of them. So um, with one particular friend we used to warm up together, play a match and then we would catch up for dinner. So that was, that was very unique. <laughs> but um, it's, it's not easy and um, you, you do have to have that like you say, killer instinct and go on court thinking you want to win. And um, for me, the way I dealt with it, I tried to think, not to think who is on the other side. <laughs> Good way of handling it. Maybe that will work in business as well. So do you have any wellness routines that you do daily or weekly that you would like to share? It's, it's, it's really funny because in our sport, we get our schedule the night before. So until sometimes 9 or 10 o'clock in the evening we don't know when we're going to play the next day and that's very hard because the, the time you play um, requires different preparations so um, sometimes you would play at 11 sometimes you would play at 5 in the afternoon or 9 or um, in Spain we used to play until early morning hours <laughs> but um, now I really like to work out in the morning if I don't do it in the morning in, in during the day I will never find the time to do it so as soon as I wake up I love to go to a gym so that's the first thing I do before breakfast I enjoy it and then um, sort of I start my day on a good note that's great what about those days because I know like everybody probably has them where you wake up and you're not feeling that motivated that how do you help to mo motivate yourself some days it's not easy just uh, but just having that thought of the feeling you have afterwards i've never completed the workout and said i feel horrible now mm -hmm. <laughs> so you always feel good after working out so that's something that really motivates you and um and also i enjoy indulging in food so sometimes i do work out so i can have ice cream <laughs> <laughs> i totally understand that um and which of the atp players do you admire and enjoy watching of course, I grew up with Novak. Uh, we know each other since we were like four years old. Mm -hmm. So I think he's a great champion and what he achieved, it's, uh, it's amazing. Um, also enjoy watching um, uh, Roger and Rafa. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's a great for men's tennis to have that um, competitiveness and to have that rivalry in sport. Excellent. Well, speaking of Novak, you two both grew up in war-torn uh, Serbia in the former Yugoslavia. What is your friendship like? And also, can you tell me how growing up in the war has affected your outlook on life? Yeah, so like I mentioned, we know each other for a long time and uh, we used to play all these tournaments under 12 and 14 years old and we used to play hide and seek and, and then it was really funny that we both made it to professional tour and to see each other in the Grand Slams. Um, so that was that was really amazing, but um, I really don't have explanation about mm. that generation that sort of came through, and especially during the war. But I think that made made us tougher because 
um, you appreciate much more what you got. And many people don't know, so the bombing in 99, it, it didn't last for too long. It was like three, four months only. But we used to train during those times. And mm. I remember I was waking up at six to go to training and the si siren for the danger would like be done. And then I would train from seven to nine and then around noon the danger would start again. And then after like a month or so like that, they, they started to keep organizing tournaments. So we used to play and we even had a rule. We would compete and the matches would start and if the sirens came on, the matches which were on a court, they had to be finished, but no new match would start. Wow. <laughs> so that was really, yeah, that was really special. And we just, we were kids. I was, I was very young at that time, so we were not really aware of everything. And I think my parents did a very good job of kind of protecting us and trying to live as normal as possible. Wow. Now, when it comes to people in the business world and on top of their game, sleep seems to be the one thing at Livestrong we hear that people have the hardest time getting. So I'm wondering how much sleep do you typically get a night and do you have any tips or routines that help you get to sleep? That is so tough and that's something that I've been battling a lot because I like to sleep between 8 to 10 hours, which is a mm. lot. And when you travel, when you compete, when you change time zones, it's not easy. Especially you f if you finish your match in 7 or 8 in the evening, not to speak if you finish it at 10 p.m., but it's so hard to go to, to bed because you have so much adrenaline and, and your body is still working. So um, that was always very hard. And um, recently I discovered also melatonin. I was, I was always against all the like, medicines and even the natural things. So that sometimes helped me. But... Um, I don't know, they used to tell me hot shower helps, sort of to mm. relax your body and mind, but when I go to bed, my mind still works, so it's not always easy. Well, those are helpful <laughs> tips, and I think melatonin helps us all get adjusted to the time change out here. What is your advice for helping others, maybe some of us out here, to get healthier and fitter? Like I spoke before, I think it's important the combination of the things. So a lot of people work out, but then they don't care so much about what they eat. Um, I think the combination of both is so important. And the days that I don't have time to work out, those are the days that I'm more careful about my um, diet mm -hmm. and what I eat. And I think the better you eat, the better you feel. And um, when I find with myself, when you travel, it's so hard to find healthy, healthy foods and you always, you get maybe too hungry so I think the important thing is not to get too hungry so to have snacks with you whether it's a protein bar or not and that way you sort of keep your levels and you don't get too hungry and then you don't um, overeat and overindulge. That's a great tip. Work-life balance probably for a lot of us is a bit of a challenge and I was wondering what you think what does work-life balance mean to you when you're playing professional tennis versus now in your retirement? Can you tell us about that? I think that's always a struggle because we all search for balance and in my experience it's very hard to get it. I think like I think someone said that to me once in life you can have everything but not at the same time <laughs> and that's really true um, because there are times when you focus more on different things and um, when you play and when you perform we used to travel the year round so I would see my friends two days a year maybe and uh, try to keep in touch with them but it's not always easy to be on your phone as well so you don't get that side you know now I have more time although I do live in Chicago I still don't get to see them that much but you have more time for those things um, and and yet you don't compete so much, you don't um, train so much. So it's really, really hard to find that perfect balance. And I think uh, what I found important is to learn how to slow down as well. Even if it's just sitting in a park and having coffee or just uh, walking, whatever it is that relaxes you, it is so important to find that, um, that balance within yourself. And how about travel? You mentioned you're living in Chicago right now. What are your favorite places to travel in the world? I love to travel and that's one of the things that I loved about my job is that I got a chance to travel all along all around the world but we also many times only saw tennis courts in a hotel so um, I would there are some places I would love to come back and visit but um, I love Australia I loved competing there I love visiting the country and um, I learned so much about different cultures as well and um, such a difference between uh, countries you know in Japan people are so different than in Australia or America and um, yeah I would love to go to Africa I've never been there. Cool. I hope 
hope you get to go. And I will, you're such a naturally beautiful woman, and it's no wonder to me that you became one of the most uh, endorsed women in uh, the world of women's sports. So I wondered if you have ever dealt with body insecurities or feeling of body image issues. Has that ever been an issue for oh, you? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I think every woman goes through that. And um, for us, I, what I felt is um, at a young age, you carry also baby weight or however they call it. And mm -hmm. I was at the top of my game when I was 20 and I think I was chubby. <laughs> and I don't know. Um, but uh, and you play in front of millions of people and um, you are constantly being judged. You wear tight dresses, short skirts and you know it's it's you don't always feel comfortable just running around like that and mm -hmm. and yet you have to because it's your sport but also your sport requires um, to be strong and to be fit and uh, it's different for everyone so um, everyone has different body shape and I think the most important thing is to accept your body no matter of the size and shapes and our weight always varies. And I think women are, women are much more conscious about it than men. And um, I think it's a lifelong battle, I think. Yeah. So there's not like any killer tip on, uh, do you what, did you watch yourself when you would see your matches? Did you watch them to kind of see what you were doing or change how you were doing certain things because of how it looked? Sometimes my coaches made me look back and the matches and analyze. And I think it's a great um, learning um, tip, mm -hmm. I did not enjoy doing that so much. Mm -hmm. I don't like to see myself. <laughs> so I want to ask you a fun question. What is your favorite song to work out to? I heard you like Ed Sheeran right now. I do. <laughs> I do like Ed Sheeran and uh, I, I just like a little bit more upbeat music, I guess. Sometimes there is in a gym, but um, it's it's really funny is because I always forget the passwords for like Spotify or radios <laughs> and I always, and I never can log in. So I asked my husband to borrow his. So I logged into his and I was just going to the gym to work out and just when he left for his training and like kept my, my songs kept switching and I'm like, what's going on? Like I'm not touching anything. And then I was messaging him, I'm like, are you listening? So we were listening at the same time and we kept switching songs. So, um, but at least we have same playlists. So it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, so is Shape of You still like one of the big yeah, ones on your list? Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah. And then I've noticed you have a fairly large number of followers on social media. So um, what do you enjoy sharing about your life online and how do you connect with people? I think that's also different now to when I was playing and um, the fan base is so important and I really like to engage with fans. Um, it's always great to see that support and um, when, when you play you are so busy with your daily life and to you it seems same every day but to fans it's a little bit different. They are interested to know what goes on behind the scenes mm -hmm. and um, that's what I try to share with them. I really try to share a little bit more insight of what they don't see um, and uh, also to show them that we are just like everyone else. You know, we um, like the same food, we like the same walks, we all go biking, we all like to walk in the nature or I don't know, have a coffee or tea, it's preferences, but I really try to make that part of my life a little bit closer to them. That makes sense. Is there anything that's completely off limits for you that you would never share online? Well, I'm quite a private person and I don't like to share too much of uh, my immediate environment and um, I like to keep that to myself and I think people know so much already about us that we do have a right for that little bit of privacy. Uh, but uh, when I'm out and about, I like to, to share that with people. Got it. And social media sometimes gets a bad rap for cre creating unrealistic expectations or making people feel like they're missing out on things. For you, um, you know, how often do you use Facebook? Does it ever make you feel, um, you know, negativity or like you're missing out? And how, are there any advice that you have for other women who might be dealing with confidence issues when they see all the great things other people are doing on social media? I think I think this is a strong message that we should encourage because. I do think they are the social media is putting unrealistic expectations, especially on young girls and the teenage girls or boys who are in maybe sensitive age. And I think it does affect women more than a man again because mm -hmm. of our emotional structure, I guess. But um, I, I just think that's really not 
true so what they see it's not real mm -hmm. and yet they they get depressed and they suffer because of that so I want to encourage people to be who they are and we are all different shape we all have different talents and we should just embrace that and that's what I try to do I never retouch my photos I never do anything mm -hmm. like this because I think it's just important to, to send a real message as well and I want to encourage this women to do the same it's really good and it's great to hear that you don't retouch your photos because I know there's a lot of pressure toward that everywhere you know right now I, I always I always have a theory if if you are who you are and people there will always be people who like you and people who don't and um, you can't please everyone so if you have people who don't really like how you look or how you talk or how you are then you don't need those people in your life so that's why I always say this is who I am and um, I want people who can embrace that and I want good people around me. It's a great attitude to have and one for people out there to, to think about as well. So Livestrong is all about simple healthy living and simple healthy eats. So you mentioned a little bit before about how you're eating. Can you tell us just a little bit about your diet and like your philosophy toward food? Well, I'm actually a big foodie. I really like food and uh, I enjoy that and I think that's also part of our culture. Mm -hmm. That's how we socialize and uh, Obviously, when, when, when I was playing you, and even now, like, I'm careful and I like to eat clean and to eat healthy and I don't eat fried foods it's just I think the habit that I have when I was playing but a lot of times when you compete like you get the most boring dishes because when you have to play match you eat plate of rice you know with nothing on it or maybe a piece of fish and rice and um, it's very very plain and boring so you can compete so now I like to, to mix it up and to try different things and to try I don't know even cooking healthy and um, I enjoy that. Great. What's a typical breakfast look like for you? To be honest, I love eggs and avocados. Mm -hmm. So I would always get like poached eggs with avocado and toast, sometimes side of smoked salmon. Um, and I, I prefer savory things rather than sweet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would eat like acai bowl with granola, but not so often. I much more prefer eggs. <laughs> Got it. And you're so busy and we're all so busy and we're trying to eat healthy on the go. Is there a, a typical snack that you pack in your bag? Like you mentioned that when you're traveling, you have something to eat with you. Like what's your healthy snack? What's it's, a go-to? It's so funny. I always tell my friends, whenever I travel, I can always feed a small family I always have like bars nuts with me because you just don't know if there's gonna be delay or if you're gonna have handy and I think I even have bars here just in case <laughs> I'm always prepared because I I, uh, I do get um, I do get hungry and I like have to have my meal sort of like regularly otherwise I'm like too hungry it's not good <laughs> now um, I know everybody's getting very excited to play tennis but I want to know what message do you want to get out there to people in the world today and particularly the women out there I think that's what I touched on before I think it's so important to embrace we are and to accept that we're all different and that we all can't be the same and that's the beauty of life too and just to be to be strong and to be sure about that and of course it takes um, time and, and development to get certain kind of self-confidence but I think just starting st one step at a time and not thinking about the end result but just trying to improve yourself every day and to accept yourself whether it is the way you talk or the way you walk or the way you look I think it's important to accept yourself in every way and I'm a big fan of the idea of treating yourself so tell me what's the big treat for you like is it a spa day is it um, a certain snack is there or food is there something that you feel is like the big treat that you'll give yourself if you're doing really well, well? It's, it's really funny because my whole life um, I had my own physio traveling so I've been having massages daily so um, now I don't but I still enjoy going to a spa for a treatment but um, also I think uh, especially on like summer day I I love to have a nice ice cream or um, so sort of like that's kind of my treat. <laughs> Great and so there are a bunch of people here that are going to be playing tennis against you. Do you have any tips for them for their game today? Uh, just have fun. <laughs> let's, uh, let's play some doubles and uh, let's, let's enjoy it. <laughs> thank you so much Anna and thank you all for coming and we're looking forward to seeing you on the court. <laughs>